What's up everybody? Today we're going to be explaining how to put a Razorback gauge, temp, belt temp gauge, in your Razor. As you, as you can see, we've already installed it. So Lucho is going to take out the the uh, belt, the belt, cover. belt cover Yep. Uh, and show y'all how he put it in there. Well, my bad. When I installed it, it was late at night. I couldn't record. Adam forgot to bring me the cameras and you know, it was all a big deal. Okay, I'm going to make this simple as it goes, okay? We're gonna probably put in the description because if I tell you right now, probably you don't gonna remember. We put in the description, or Adam is gonna put it on the screen, which size you need, you know, flathead screwdriver. Take out your cover. If you take it out two more turns, it might come out easier. <laughs> oh, she said. All right, now you got the, the tube, bend, breather, whatever you wanna call it. Now, I have my little fancy tool. I like my little tool there. It's just quick, you know, eight eight millimeter swivel. It's perfect because you can do every ball from with this. Now we go from down here. One, two, two on the floor. That's the main reason you got a swivel for this one. So that one's behind the shop, Five. so. Six. Seven. Should be one or two more down there at the bottom. Eight. Eight bolts. Nine bolts. Nine bolts. Now, you need to pull this out. I already unplugged my sensor here. Okay, there's how it looks. The part of the sensor, you're gonna have a little pigtail like this. Please put silicone in there. That's uh, thanks uh, big time to Ryan Edwards with Sutherland Riders. He is a great guy. He's the one sent me the pictures how to do this because this 2019, 2020s, they have the belt cover same as a Turbo S. This is me. When I look at it, it was a few videos there, but nothing like this. And you know, it was really bad to see where I need to put it. But you know, what you want is about to be flashing there. You don't want no more than, you know, what is that about? What do you think, Adam? About a quarter of an inch, yeah, or so. You don't want it too. You want it close, but you don't want it that close to touch the belt neither. Um, from the this last nut in here, where the bolt goes, you want to go right in the center of that. You don't want to be too much to the left or too much to the right. You just want to be closer, as close as you can get it to there. We're gonna put some pictures. I think I took when I installed this. I mean, pictures is going to show you exactly where to go before uh, silicone. Silicone, the outside, big time. Like you see, make a big blob in there. Don't don't get holes around it. Just make sure you go around evenly. I will put it on the inside too, but I'm kind of scared on the inside because if silicone for any reason gets heat up and it gets out of there, it will go to the primary, the secondary. It can damage your clutch or, you know, your belt or something in there. Yeah. And you know that's the main reason I didn't do it on the inside. But then you know from this, this is your infrared sensor here. It goes to this wire, but this connects to. Let me see here. It connects to here, but I have my wire running around. I'm sorry, there. There's the wire. Connects to it. Comes up. Goes here. I have think I have the 12. 12 feet cable. I got it down here going in and then all my lights I put some rock lights here but I had in the house before probably gonna change them soon. Um, all the lights goes that way under the tunnel. This is coming this way and what I did is I opened down here I took out a swing about here inside of the under the seat. I'm gonna pull the seat out real quick. This is simple. Very, very simple to pull the seat out. 
yeah that's what i said right. very simple all right now we can see better i got the wire coming in here it goes down there what i did is i fished it all the way through here you can see some of the wire there but you got a place you're going to take out this uh this fender here because you need to see behind there and you pull just a little bit here and it's a it's a passage here but it comes through it under the dash on that corner and then this is the bad part you know putting the gauge in there it was a little pain because this is a two and one sixteenths hole for the gauge and it's just a a little nut um it's like a jam net behind the the gauge okay your problem is it's gonna be almost impossible for you to find a uh, two and one sixteenth of an inch also this is mean i went and trying to order everywhere no home depot no lowe's i went to auto parts store i was crazy and crazy stuff but well after i realized and see i have a two inch hole saw in my house and i drilled the hole as center as i could and um you know when i drilled the hole as center as i could you know you need to see you're gonna fit on both sides right and then what i did is i grabbed my knife and I start to take out just a little bit at the time. Just a tinge here, a tinge there, fit the, uh, the gauge can. to get in and you know, get, it, it needs to be tied. It don't need to be just loose in there. It needs to be tied some. And you know, once you feel it coming in, you just get just a tinge more. Man, went in, right on, put the, put the jam net in the back. And you know, you pretty much plug your wire coming off the sensor back there. If you have another wire, you're going to need to wire it up to the side by side, but it's going to be one of the accessory wires in your bus bar or any accessory wire you have in there right now uh, to turn on with the side by side when you crank it. When you put your key on, it will turn on the gauge. And pretty much it's two, it's a red and a black. That's what I did. You can choose a different if you want a uh, switch for it. You can go for it. Um, I put it just straight to my switch. Every time the side by side is on, it's, it's running pretty much and you know pretty yeah, that's, how, that's how it should be yeah pretty simple some people might like a switch on it you know some people might like a switch well, I, I would want it on all yeah times. me too i mean i want it all every single time i sub side is on but yeah pretty much you know the the, the two and one sixteen inch hole saw is almost impossible to find it but a two inch and you know you're yeah, just uh, get a two inch hole saw and just kind of do get a, you can get a knife you can get anything else just kind of go a little bit of time just enough to where bit. it fits even you know you can sand it i mean a knife just worked great it, it, it was yeah. so easy to do with a knife this is plastic you know it's not it's not yeah. a big deal but yeah i didn't see too many reviews on this too many how, how to do it this is I mean this racer back gauge this is a 3.0 black face it is it's the best supposedly out there uh we're gonna see how it works because I I just put it up to 110 degrees today. This first time I dropped myself aside in weeks. It's been parked here. We've been installing a few parts on it uh, recently, and um, see we got the new doors. Um, yeah, we uh, that's pretty much the racer back gauge. You know, nine bolts back here. You drill. Oh, I'm sorry. Your drill bit for the in, infrared um, sensor is half an inch and you need to drill it like you need to drill it really where where we show you here we might make some measurements later without them and um, we show you exactly where but you see this here this line you need to be right on the edge of that you see how close you got about a finger in there about a finger you got a finger one of my five fingers on this side yeah and then on this side here well the problem is a silicone but and let me show you something real quick let me put this back on. If I can. <laughs> them, them uh, clutch covers are... They could be a little pain. Yep. There's only a certain way they'll go in. After uh, Lucho takes his whole... Knocks his side-by-side -side over. Yeah. Trying to put it in. There you go. No. So now that we've got the clutch cover back on. <laughs> only took like 15 tries. Yep. Anybody that's took the, uh, the belt cover off knows it's a pain in the butt with a shock on to put it back on. All right, now, I want to show you a reference for the sensor mount 
compared in relation on this bolt and this here that's how I did look at this piece here and the bolt there that's my piece of reference where it's supposed to be as long as you got it there you know you own the money like I say you own the money now what you do here is you know I got a I had a little zip tie there you have your orientation connector here and you screw it and one pulls the other one and then you're pretty much good to go I, I'm putting a zip tie again here but if I'm on the trail and something happened I just can break the zip tie it's not a big deal but I just like to keep everything tied and safe in there and this is how it looks hold on let me see we can get a good picture for y'all to see how it looks really hard. There it is, working. Yep, so that's how it works. That's how it works. Now I'm gonna find the rest of my nine bolts because I got one missing here and I got it in my hand now. <laughs> that's pretty much what it is. I mean, yes. It's gonna help to don't burn belts. We probably done a few. I never burned a belt before, but I, I don't know Saba Sada Slona's Adam. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see. I mean, you know, let's keep your, your temps down, see if something is wrong with the belt. So yeah, if the temp gets too high, you'll know when you to back off of it and let Correct. it cool down. Actually you have this this green light in the in, in the sensor on top. It goes from green to red when you get to 230 above 230 i'm saying 200 goes to yellow 200 goes to yellow 230 goes to red and 260 goes to red blinking but that's just stop now well you don't need to stop and turn it off you need to just stop this up aside for a minute and let just it cool, let down. cool down just yep. throw just, it neutral let it cool yep. down let the engine run and the engine would take the heat out and you know well this is it i mean it works pretty good we will try it and see what, what we do. It'll help us a lot in the future with belt life. Yes. And that's kind of the deal. We're going to... Because we like to ride a lot of rocky trails that... Yes, a lot of rocky trails. And, you know, sometimes it requires a, a lot of forward rough spinning and get... You yeah, know, let you, you don't want to burn a belt up. We don't want to belt, you know, burn... No, no belts. This is... We got what on this? Uh, 40 miles. Seventy-four miles on this machine. This is me. We we get in everything. Twelve point seven hours. So I wish I can get this this machine to do the first old change sometime soon. I want to really get on it, but you know, <laughs> that's what I said. But we still get on it. But we're trying to take care of it. You know, first. Yeah, first, we're trying to do uh, everything right. Take care of the yeah. supper side. First uh, breaking period is what it is. You know, and we just you know. Trying to get as much of the stuff as quick as we can to don't do no more with them. We're going to get yeah. on a point, but we just probably want to buy axles and tires because we're going to keep breaking them. It's, you know, I never break, I've broken an axle before, but, you know. I was on the old Razor. And the old Razor on the XP1000. Here, Adam has got a... Um, Seven, sixteen, fifty. Sixteen hundred and something miles on the stock axles, turbo, uh, 18. But uh, that's, I think that's freaking amazing. Uh, I never heard about that, and he's really hard on it, too. Oh, yeah. You can tell from the videos, we're not easy on these he things. He don't baby this other side, but, yeah, I hope my axles last that long. And, you know, guys, this is the Razorback Gauge 3.0. Again, mine is a 3.0. I think this is the latest and greatest. Black face. Um, but, yeah, guys, uh, have a good day. Please, please, if you like this, like and subscribe, guys. And uh, we will we'll see you soon in more videos. Have a good one, guys.